what you do and what's your favorite feature? Yes, so my name is Tristan Joseph. Um, I am currently a data scientist in New York for a company oh, awesome. named thank you, a company named Del Delta Emerald Ventures. Uh, for context, Delta Emerald Ventures is a venture capital fund that uh, funds cannabis companies mm -hmm. right now. And as I said, I'm a data scientist on the team and I've been with this team since uh, October of 2020. Favorite pizza would have to be Hawaiian. I am with a pineapple? lover of pineapples <laughs> on pizza. There's no other option. I know that is a water divider among yes. people. <laughs> yes, but it's pineapples is the correct answer. <laughs> pineapples I'm going to trust answer. you. I never had pineapple on my pizza before. No, you need to. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to try whenever I have the chance. Yeah, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> so could you tell us how you started working with data? Sure. So uh, I got into data because I, I'm a lover of math. Mm -hmm. I know that's you know, not the popular opinion, but <laughs> I, I really do love math and, and economics and statistics. So that's kind of what I studied, you know, in undergrad and, and oh, nice. in my master's uh, growing up. And um, so I, I, I do have that experience with data, with economics and things like that. How I got into this particular role was I graduated into the pandemic. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of companies at the time were on either hiring freezes or they're not sure how they were moving forward and things like that. So what I did was I, two things I guess, I started a blog where I just posted my personal data projects or just concepts that I, I understood from math and how that related to statistics. Um, as well as I did a lot of courses online such as like data camp and things like that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the current company I work at now, they happened to come across one of my blogs oh, and they were like, hey, can we use this project that you talked about? Like, how, how can that be applied to our company? They really liked it. I interviewed, I got the job and I've been with them. So, oh, that's so, so wonderful. Thank you. By the way. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you face on your day-to-day -day work? For sure. So, one of the challenges that our company faces me in particular is that so there's a lot of documentation about uh, various tools in data science but that's mainly like the the more introductory level tools so you would find a lot of documentation on pandas or uh, regular python numpy and things mm -hmm. like that at my company although we do use pandas and python mm -hmm. we also use a bit more advanced tools so we have some you know unique maybe niche cases where for example we use PySpark. Uh, PySpark is a combination of Python, SQL and Spark mm -hmm. and we use that in a cloud environment on Amazon Web Services in AWS. Um, there's not a lot of documentation about how to integrate these cloud services with PySpark. Oh, yeah. So you kind of really just have to learn through trial and error oh, yeah. and you know, as good as that is, there's a lot of time wasted in development where, you know, if you spend too many months trying to figure out how to make something work, yeah. you're probably losing time where you could have deployed like a model or, or deployed some research that if you deploy it three months later, it's no longer as relevant. Oh so, yeah, I know. Be yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. yeah. So. Really, uh, speaking about something that sucks, can you tell us something that you love about data? Yeah, something I love about data is it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that might be a generic answer, but it's in the sense that everything could be measured and you can understand the effect that, you know, changing one variable has on multiple outcomes. Mm -hmm. And depending on the space you're in, we are in like the retail space. Mm -hmm. So definitely understanding how maybe like a 1% change in, in advertising, how does that lead to an increase in sales or something like that? Oh, yeah. To us, that's extremely powerful. So I love the fact that uh, even, you know, just like podcasts like mm -hmm. this, we can, we can analyze a podcast, analyze what's said analyze uh, the sentiment of, of what people are saying and things like that mm -hmm. and see how that relates to our use case for us again that would be 
sales, so understanding what people are saying about a company, how does that translate into a change in sales? Data is very helpful to make sense of the world. That is yeah. how I see it. Yeah. Yes. Um, and could you tell us something about data that you hate? I definitely hate. So, the fact that data is everywhere means that it, it can come in multiple formats. Oh, oh yeah. Meaning, like, again, just to bring it back to my use case on sales. We have product data, but a lot of the product data is not necessarily normalized. So I can have, let's say, a, you know, a, a, a product. Let's say the product is just called Apple. I can have Apple coming in in all capital letters, or oh, yeah. all lowercase letters, or a misspelling, mm -hmm. or something like that. And we have to be able to, like, as a human, I probably know, you know, Apple with all caps is the same as Apple with all lower caps, most yeah. likely. Or if there's a typo, you know, like it's missing a P, mm -hmm. I probably know, okay, this is still Apple, it's just mm -hmm. a typo. But when you are when you put that into a computer and you're doing that at scale, yeah. uh, especially with machine learning models, these things pick up nuances like very quickly. So if you feed a model, you know, these three different categories of Apple, mm -hmm. Although in reality it's the same thing, the model will treat it as three different things. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to, to, to reconcile all of these you know, different variations of the same thing yeah, into, yeah. into one thing and that's actually very hard to do. So. <laughs> yeah, being there, uh, working at a delivery company or two in Brazil, I, I faced that problem amazing. Yeah, <laughs> especially with like user entered data. Oh yeah. It's, yeah, it's... It's hard, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. So, uh, could you tell us, tell us something that you would like to learn or uh, get a deeper sense in, in any topic of it, or area in data or programming or whichever? Yeah, so um, I am very interested in learning more about MLOps or oh. machine learning operations. Uh, as a data scientist, you know, we are often tasked with creating models of some kind to generate severe impact to uh, our stakeholders and things like that. Mm -hmm. The issue or the, the problem statement is that uh, when you do analysis on static data, the results you produce are only true for that sample of data, that data at that time. Mm -hmm. So when you then release your model like into production, mm -hmm. your model is trained on that previous data, that's static data. Mm -hmm. And we, as data scientists, know your data is not, in the real world, your data is not static. So I can release a model today mm -hmm. that will be true for the data today or historically, but the data will change over time as I release that model. Yeah. So let's say six months down the line or something like that, my model no longer captures the state of the world six months later. Yeah. So MLOps, or machine learning operations, it's a way for data scientists or data teams to release models in production, but these models also can account for the data drifts or the updates uh, to the data that your model was trained on to make sure that it's, it's always capturing how the state of the world is at that particular time. Yeah, nice. uh, yeah that's not something I know much about at this time. I, you know, I definitely know how to make a model, train a model, deploy a model, but how to make sure or ensure that model is up to date always and capturing the real world, that's not something I know. That is something I want to know. Could you share one big learning that you had from your working with data? Being able to interpret or explain your results mm -hmm. is is one of the most major things that I feel uh, is not captured with, within you know the world of, of learning data science. Mm -hmm. uh, frequently, p people talk about how to you know clean your data, how to build the model, and mm -hmm. that's great. But the impact that you can provide to your stakeholders is only as good as. You know the, 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 the way that you can explain why are these results important yeah. and if you 
you can build the best model in the world, but if you can't explain to your stakeholders uh, how do you actually use this model, how do you use the results mm -hmm. to generate impact or to generate the results that they're looking for, mm -hmm. then your model's not really that good. Like it's, it's just good with data, but it doesn't provide an impact. Yeah, impact is a big thing. Yeah. Um, but I think one question would be, what advice would you have for people that are going to start working in this area or just kind of their journey in like becoming a data scientist or working in data? Yeah, I think um, one of the, 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 the biggest use cases for data and data science at this point is in releasing new products and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you really have to understand your users, however. As engineers, we tend to go out and like build very cool toys because we can and because we have the data. But we also have to keep in mind that someone is using this tool in the end. There's some end user who wants this to solve some problem that they're having. And you can go out and build a hundred tools, but if your end user, if none of these tools are catered towards your end user, then they wouldn't use any of those 100 tools. So one thing I would recommend, or maybe two things I would recommend, is understanding your user, understanding your problem space as much as possible. And I guess a book I would recommend to, to, to learn how to do that is uh, The Mom Test. Not I, I don't remember the author who it's by right now, but it's, a, it's called The Mom Test and the book is essentially about how to understand your users and how to create products that, uh, based on data that your users would most likely use, how to test those products to ensure that they're meeting the needs of your users, and then how to iterate or improve on those products such that your users continue or increase their usage of those products. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, just a reminder for everybody watching is that the book that Tristan just recommended uh, it's going to be linked in the description of this video. Thank you so much, Tristan, for your time. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.